Ice launch check on countdown net. Pad is clear. 10, 9, 8. Launch auto sequence seven, has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go for launch. Dragon, separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Good afternoon, my name is Jesse Anderson and I'm joining you from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. I'll be your host as we follow Falcon 9 taking the SES-22 satellite to its intended orbit in space from Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station Launch Complex 40. Today's launch will mark SpaceX's 27th launch of the year and 90th overall launch from Pad 40. This launch also marks SpaceX's sixth SES launch, most recently having launched SES-12 in 2018. SES-22 will deliver TV and radio services in addition to key data transmission services to millions of Americans across the U.S. And despite the global pandemic, the SES-22 satellite was delivered in only 22 months. Now, currently, SES-22 is safely enclosed in the payload fairing at the very top of the rocket. And that is what you are seeing on your screen. This is a live view of our Falcon 9 vehicle. Now, as I mentioned, at the very top, we have the payload fairing, which is about 40 feet tall and 17 feet in diameter. To put that size into perspective, an average fire truck is about 40 feet long and 12 feet wide. So a fire truck would fit comfortably inside of our payload fairing. The fairing's job is to protect the payload from aerothermal loads, heating, and contamination during ascent. And once we reach the vacuum of space, we will jettison the fairing as the second stage will continue on its journey to orbit. Now below the payload fairing is the second stage, which is responsible for taking the SES-22 satellite to its correct drop-off orbit in space. Not only does SpaceX's second stage look similar to the first stage, which is the larger stage below it, it also has the same diameter, uses the same metal in the tanks, same computers, same propellant, and nearly the same engine. This allows us to use similar tooling, design, and systems to essentially build two rockets that are more reliable. The first and second stages are connected by the inner stage, which has pneumatic pushers that allow stage separation during flight. The inner stage also houses the 10th engine connected to the second stage called the Merlin vacuum engine, or what you'll hear us call the MVAC engine. The bottom two thirds of the vehicle is the first stage and is the primary part of the rocket that gets reused multiple times. On the bottom of the first stage are nine Merlin M1D engines that accelerate the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere and into various orbits in space. Now the first stage and both the fairing halves are flying for the second time on this mission. We will be attempting to recover these rocket parts for a second time today uh, using our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, which is what you are seeing on your screen. And for the recovery of the fairing halves, we will be using our recovery ship, Doug. Now liftoff will, is currently set for 5.04 p.m. Eastern time. So let's learn a little bit more about our customer and the mission. Get ready as SES-22 embarks on its journey to space on a SpaceX rocket to deliver TV and radio experiences as well as data transmission services to millions of Americans in the U.S. But its mission doesn't end there. SES-22 is also part of SES's program to complete the FCC's plan to rapidly clear C-band spectrum with the goal of making room for 5G-enabled services in the U.S. So it was becoming clear four or five years ago that for 5G deployment across the U.S., you had to get access to mid-band spectrum and plentiful amounts of mid-band spectrum. And in the US, C-band was the most appropriate, but it was full of services that we were delivering for our broadcast customers. 
C-band broadcast network that have existed for 40 years, working with them to reprioritize, move to the higher parts of the frequency, and free up the whole of the 300 megahertz of C-band spectrum for the mobile operators. And these satellite launches help us to reprioritize the use of spectrum in the US in favor of 5G services, which I think is incredibly strategic and also economically important in the US. Since 2020, SES has been working tirelessly to move its existing U.S. customers into a smaller portion of the C-Band. Opening up part of the C-Band will help wireless operators to quickly deploy 5G networks across the continental U.S., bringing ultra-fast services to consumers and businesses. So this launch that's happening right now is, is critical. We've already cleared about a third of the spectrum in the most important parts of the U.S. by working with our customers to reorientate their networks. But this launch and the other two that will follow are the ones that will allow us to clear all of the spectrum permanently, and most importantly, protect all of the broadcast services with high performance filters that we're installing across the US following this launch. So could not be more important, and we could not be more excited about this upcoming launch. It took satellite manufacturer Talus Alinea Space only 22 months to build SES-22 before the spacecraft was shipped to the launch site. When launched, SES-22 will be positioned at 135 degrees west and will provide broadcast and connectivity services to millions of Americans starting in early August 2022 to clear C-band spectrum while maintaining uninterrupted services. SES will be launching four more C-band satellites in the next few months. SES is on track to meet the FCC's accelerated C-band clearing deadline of end 2023, proudly enabling the next wave of 5G-led innovation in the United States. SES was one of SpaceX's earliest launch customers and has been a key partner in a number of firsts for us. SES was the first commercial satellite operator to launch with SpaceX back in December of 2013 with SES-8. This mission also happened to be SpaceX's first mission to a supersynchronous transfer orbit. Now, most notably, SES was also the very first customer to fly on a reused booster. SpaceX launched SES-10 back in March of 2017 using a booster that previously supported a Dragon cargo resupply mission. Stage 1 RP-1 load complete. Now, just five years later, SpaceX has reflown Falcon rockets 102 times. It is an incredible progression, and we greatly appreciate SES's support over the years in these efforts. Now, as far as the mission to space, in order to get SES-22 and any payload into orbit, the rocket has to not only go up really fast, it also has to go sideways. So as we ascend, we tilt the engines, and the technical term for that is called gimballing, and that turns the rocket horizontally. Now, we're still going up, but we are also heading horizontally away from the launch pad, and that's what we call a gravity turn. The rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. Now, to help demonstrate this concept, here is an image firing a cannon from a really high mountain. The cannonball will arc, and then gravity will pull it back down to Earth. And as you increase the power, the cannonball will arc and land further and further away. Now, eventually, if you could continue to increase the power, the cannonball will be going so fast that it ends up in free fall around the Earth. Now, gravity is still pulling it back uh, down to Earth, but it's going so fast that it never hits the ground. Yeah, pressure and for strong back retract. Now, this arc, which, we, which constantly misses the Earth, is called an orbit. So when we get to lift off today, watch orientation of the Falcon 9 vehicle. You'll see that we go straight up until about T plus 10 seconds, at which point we will begin that shift in orientation. So Falcon 9 go, can go sideways really fast. So be sure to keep an eye out in just a few minutes. Strong back retract. And as you can see on your screen, there are clamp arms opening up. That is connected to the transporter erector, which will, we will begin to retract away from the vehicle once that clamp arms are done opening. 
I would use the transporter erector to roll the vehicle out to the pad and raise it to its vertical launch position. And it looks very slow and slight, but it looks like the clamp arms are now open and the transporter erector is retracting just slightly away from the vehicle on your screen. Transporter erector also routes vehicles, fluids, power and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and satellites until Falcon 9 goes on internal power and clears the pad. Now we are coming up on the next event, which will be LOX load complete on the first stage. That happens around the T minus three minute mark. Second stage. stage one LOX load complete. There's that call out that LOX load is complete on the first stage. Second stage will complete around the T minus two minute mark, just about a minute away from now. And so far, weather is green. We are about 60% favorable for liftoff at T0 today. The range is also green for launch. The vehicle and payload continue to be healthy. And if for some reason we are not able to launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. Now again, we are coming up on completion of propellant loading of the Falcon 9 vehicle. Second stage is coming up here at around the T minus two minute mark for LOX load completion. Great news, propellant loading is now completed on Falcon 9. Next event we should hear is Falcon 9 in startup, and that'll be when the flight computers take over the vehicle. Gas yeah, launch closeouts. And now that we finished prop loading, we are venting out the liquid oxygen lines on that transporter erector. And you can kind of see that venting there on your screen as you see more of those white clouds around the vehicle. the T minus one minute mark, Falcon 9 will go into startup. Falcon 9 is a startup. And great call out. The flight computers have now taken over the launch countdown. Now just waiting the final call from the launch director. Great news, all systems go for launch. Let's watch as Falcon 9 takes the SES-22 satellite into orbit. T-15 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition and liftoff. <laughs> Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from pad 40, carrying the SES-22 satellite. And we have throttled down the engines on stage one in preparation for max Q. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees, and that should be coming up in about 10 the seconds or so.
back queue. And great news, the vehicle is now through the highest amount of aerodynamic pressures. So with that, we will have three events happening back to back. That will be MECO, stage separation, and SES-1. MECO stands for main engine cutoff, and that's where all nine of the M1D engines shut down and slow the vehicle down in preparation for the next event, which is stage separation. And back to and stage separation is exactly what it sounds like. That's where the first and second stage separate from each other. First stage will start to make its way back down to Earth. And again, we will be attempting to land on our drone ship a shortfall of Gravitas today. And during that time, stage two will continue on its journey with the third event, SES-1 or second stage engine start one. That's where the single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will light up and it will propel the second stage along with the SES-22 payload to orbit. Now, in addition to these three major events, the fairing halves will separate about a minute after SES-1, so keep an eye out for that as well. Nico. Stage separation. Yeah. And some incredible views there on your screen. We were able to see Miko stage separation. And on your right hand screen, you could see that MVAC engine beginning to light up and glow that red color there. First stage on your left hand screen, those grid fins are deploying. That is what helps guide the vehicle back down to the landing zone. And we do have fairing deploy coming up here in just under 10 seconds. And there you just saw on your screen fairing deploy and you can see in your right hand screen the fairing, one of the fairing halves falling back down to earth. Really cool view. Again, we will be attempting to recover the fairing halves with our recovery ship, Doug, today. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. And just past T plus four minutes into launch today. In order to complete today's landing of the first stage, it will have a couple more burn burns to go. The next one will be the entry burn. That's where three of the nine M1D engines reignite. This helps to slow the vehicle down as it's re-entering back, re back into the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Entry burn is just under two minutes from now. It lasts about 25 seconds or so. And then these Last and final burn for the first stage will be the landing burn. That is just a single engine burn. It's the center E9 engine. Lights up just a few seconds before touching down on the landing zone. And these M1D engines have about 190,000 pounds of thrust. So just one single engine reigniting for about 20, 30 seconds helps to slow the vehicle down just rapidly enough to touch down on the landing zone. Some really cool views on your screen. Again, on the left-hand side, what you're seeing is a view from the first stage vehicle as it's making its way back down to Earth. Your right-hand screen is a view on the second stage looking at our MVAC engine. We're roughly 30 seconds away from the entry burn on the first stage. Stage two is still looking good on a nominal trajectory.
Stage one, STS is saved. Stage one, entry burn startup. And as you can see on your left hand screen, those three M1D engines have reignited for the entry burn. Again, just a short burn helps to slow the vehicle down as it's entering back into the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one, entry burn, shut down. And as you see, those engines have now shut down. That concludes the entry burn. Again, next up for the first stage will be the landing burn. And the entry both burn... vehicles are on nominal trajectories. Great call-outs, nominal trajectories for both vehicles. Now, the entry burn does help slow the vehicle down as it enters back into the Earth's atmosphere, but the atmosphere actually helps to scrub most of the velocity on the first stage. So that's why um, we can let it coast until we get closer to landing, and then we'll ignite that last engine for the touchdown uh, just a few seconds before landing. Stage two is the thermal guidance. And we're just about 30 seconds away from the landing burn on the first stage, but we will have a couple events happening back to back. Uh, first, will be, first will be Seco one, that is second stage engine cutoff one for the MVAC engine on that stage second two, stage. Just a few seconds after Seco 1 will be the landing burn beginning. Stage 1 landing burn startup. Impact shutdown. There we had both of those events Seco 1 and the landing burn beginning on the first stage. Again, attempting to land on a. Orbit insertion. A shortfall of Gravitas and confirmation of good orbit on the second stage. Stage one, landing leg deploy. Expected loss of signal, Cape. Stage one, landing is confirmed. <laughs> and what an incredible view. As you can see, Falcon 9 has touched down on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. This landing marks the, the second successful landing for this particular booster, having supported previously the Starlink launch in May. It also marks our 127th overall successful recovery of an orbital class rocket, including both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy first stages. And we also did have confirmation of good orbit on the second stage. So with successful second stage engine cutoff and first stage landing, we are going to be in a coast phase until just before the second relight of our MVAC engine on the second stage, which will be followed by payload deploy. So sit tight and we'll see you back here just around the T plus 26 minute mark.
Expected loss of signal, Bermuda.
Welcome back to the live webcast for the SES 22 mission. If you're just joining us, liftoff occurred at 5.04 p.m. Eastern time from launch pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Now, post liftoff, we also had a successful main engine cutoff, stage separation, ignition and shutdown of the second stage, fairing deploy, and first stage landing. Now, coming up shortly, we will relight and shut down the second stage engine one more time before payload deploy. That is coming up here in just a few seconds. And this burn will be about a minute long. And back start up. And an awesome view of that MVAC engine reigniting. This burn will last a little over a minute. And as a reminder, SES-22 will deliver TV and radio services in addition to key data transmission services to millions of Americans across the U.S. This MVAC engine has a thrust of about 220,000 pounds of thrust. And reigniting the engine helps take the stage closer to its drop-off orbit. So we'll reignite it and then shut it down and allow the second stage to coast for a bit until it gets to its targeted drop-off orbit. And back, shut down. There, we heard that call out and saw a little bit of the MVAC engine shutting down. We are waiting for confirmation. Final orbit insertion. That's exactly what we were waiting for, confirmation of good orbit. So with confirmation of a successful second stage engine start and cutoff, we're going to take another quick short break, sit back and enjoy the space tunes, and we'll join you live to cover payload deployment in about four minutes from now.
Welcome back to the SES 22 launch webcast. We've had a successful mission so far, lift off at 5.04 p.m. Eastern time, successful landing of our first stage, and two relight and shutdowns of our second stage engine. Now we're coming up on our last major milestone, which of course is payload deploy. And that should be coming up here in just a few seconds. You, Payload separation confirmed. You are watching the SES-22 satellite drifting away from Falcon 9's second stage. And that confirms payload deploy. So with successful deployment of the SES-22 satellite, that will bring our webcast to a close. We want to thank SES for entrusting us with today's mission and all of you for joining us. If this launch got you excited about space and you're interested in joining our team, check out spacex.com careers to check out our open positions. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.